Even more important than that is they are not worshiping my great, amazing, awesome God. And he deserves all the worship of them. Then they are throwing their shoes in his face and saying, God, we don't care about you. They should be worshiping God. And I want to go and you must go to tell others. Not so they just don't go to hell and we go, Shh, wow, that was close. No, we want to tell them about Christ, about the salvation that God has provided. So they turn around and they say, wow, I've been living my life for myself all these years. I want to turn around and now worship this awesome God that has given me this great salvation. And I like to say, put it this way. <coughs> if you want to have compassion for souls... Ask God that he will give you passion for him. Because passion for God will produce compassion for souls. Amen. And if you think about God, about his love and his mercy and his grace and his patience and all these great things about God and you think and meditating about that, you just want to go and tell these people about your great God. And you will have so much compassion for them. But if we don't have we don't have compassion many times because our passion for God is like really, really tiny and really small. That's why we are not going so much because our passion for God is slow. We're too concerned about other things. So we need to ask God, give me a passion for, the, for you so much that I would just go and have so much compassion for these people. And I hope this changes the way you look at witnessing to your friends. Or your family members. Many times you witness to somebody because I've done that. You witness because you don't want them to go to hell. And you're like, push it, push it. Come on, let's do it. Let's witness to them. And we all want that. We want to share the gospel so they don't go to hell. But just add this to your thoughts. Put an extra thought in your mind. And just say, dad, mom. My God is such a great God. I want you to worship my God because he deserves your worship. And you right now, you're not giving him the worship that he deserves. And when you turn your life around and you start worship him, it's going to be the best thing for your life. Why? Because you and I were created for only one reason. What is it? To worship him. God did not create you and me because he was lonely. That's ridiculous. To think that God was so lonely that he said, oh, let's create a universe. Uh, let's create man and woman, so I'll be much better now. Not at all. He created you. He created me for his own glory. And that's why we are here for, to bring him glory. Amen. And if you're not doing that, you better change that. And you better ask God to help you. And if you are not doing enough, like we all have to realize that our worship of God is not perfect yet. We constantly need to be improving in the way we worship him. So we must pray, God, help me praise you in the way you want me to praise you. Because that's what I'm here for, to bring you glory. First thing we want to tell people is the salvation that God has provided through Jesus Christ. What is the second thing we want to tell people? Verse 4, it's going to tell us. It says, Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. We have a bunch of people here singing, happy, so joyful. Why? It's because they won the lottery. <laughs> they made a lot of money here. Why are so joyful? For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. You and I understand that God deserves all the worship. So we must go and tell others about the salvation. And you and I must go and tell others about the justice of God. That God is a just God. You know, here it says, All let the nations be glad and sing for joy. They are singing not because... They have more money now. They are famous and all those things. Not, and this sounds hard, especially for the younger people, not because they found finally that special person. 
and they are so joyful. Now they know what joy is. And now they have that boyfriend that he's so, he's so cute first, obviously. And then he's so sweet. He treats me like a lady. This is joy. And then they get married. Oh, there is nothing better than marriage. And they are so joyful. Then come the kids. Oh, kids are the greatest thing ever. This is what brings joy to my life. Then grandkids, oh, forget about kids, grandkids. That's what brings joy to our life. And we go like this, right? Now I have joy. Tomorrow I don't have joy. When I get divorced, I don't have joy anymore. Oh, my kids are a disaster. Okay, no, no more joy anymore. And you go by joy, no joy, no joy, no joy. Why? Because real joy doesn't come by all these situations. Real joy comes only by knowing the person of God. Knowing this God brings joy to our lives. Knowing that God is a just God. He will make everything right one day. And here it says, Thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. And you know what? We know, according to the Bible, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is coming one day. And He will reign in this earth. And He will be the best president we could have ever asked for he will do everything perfect everything right he will make justice everywhere and even if you talk to people today and even some of you i know you've gone through s different things and you say what happened to me years ago that wasn't just that was not fair what happened to me and i suffered so much I want justice. I'm sure some of you have gone through things like that. We have that promise that He will do everything right. He will bring justice. And when you tell these people, your friends, your family members that have been rejecting God, you say, listen, I understand what happened to you, but the Bible says that God is a just God. And he will make everything right. Hopefully they will say, wow, I want to have that kind of God. I want to worship that kind of God. I want to praise that kind of God. That kind of precedent that will do everything right. One thing that shocked me when I came to the States to study, and um, we don't watch much TV, but one thing that I watched and I was shocked, and I still see it once in a while. There are a bunch of TV shows about judges here. Judge Judy, Judge Rudy, Judge Charlie. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> Why? Why do you have so much of that? Lack of justice. Everybody wants things to make right for them. And everybody that you talk to, you can say, Yes, probably that wasn't right, but you can be in this side with God as your judge, and He will make everything right for you. And if that means that He does everything right because He's a just God, He cannot allow sin in His presence. He hates sin. He loves the sinner. And if you are here without Christ, the right thing for God to do is to punish you. That's the just thing. And because He's a just God, He will do that. You don't have to go through that. Christ paid the price for you and for me. He's done it. That's it. It's been accomplished. But because God is just, He will have to do it. People say, well, we all heard that. Oh, God is God of love. He would never send anybody to hell. Well, that wouldn't be a, tr a true God. That's a false God. Because the true God is a just God that has to punish sin. So we want to tell these people about the salvation of Christ. The salvation that God has provided. The justice of God. And finally, we want to see what verse 6 says. 
Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us.